In today's lesson, we're pretty much going to look at the energy flow and pretty much the simplistic look at photosynthesis. And that is pretty much today's topic. Now, the only thing is here to understand photosynthesis is to really look at really where the main source of energy comes from. Main source of energy really comes from our sun. So the sun, pretty much the light from the sun is the ultimate source of energy uh, for pretty much a majority of um, or living organisms uh, on our planet. Now, the only thing is organisms, they really can't use um, the energy of the, from the light directly, right? So the sun's giving off light energy, right? But they cannot use it directly. So first, the only thing is they need to somehow find a way to capture that uh, solar energy and find a way to store um, that pretty much in a form of a chemical energy, right? in the form of some kind of a chemical energy, right? Uh, pretty much as we've talked about uh, in the past, called carbohydrates. Right? Right, these are uh, carbon uh, molecules. So they're going to form um, this chemical energy in the form of these carbohydrate molecules, primarily called glucose. The formula for glucose, C6, H12, O6. And then somehow they're going to then transfer that energy from glucose right, to that molecule of energy that we know of or that you should have already covered. And I have uh, created a video for it called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, pretty much which is what all cells use as their source of energy. So all cells use this ATP. This is the, the molecule of energy that all living organisms utilize. Now, the absorption of light energy and the production of glucose uh, occurs through this process called um, photosynthesis, right? And in which we're going to transfer the energy from glucose to ATP, right? Now, to transfer the, the, um, the energy from glucose to ATP, is pretty much a process called cellular respiration. So now, let's look, and we'll talk about that uh, later. So, light energy, light energy, somehow needs to be converted to glucose. And this is what we call photosynthesis. Then ultimately, we're gonna need to take that glucose and pretty much convert it um, to, or transfer that energy from glucose to ATP in a process called cellular respiration. Now, who does, uh, who's involved with photosynthesis? Well, pretty much photosynthesis occurs amongst pretty much all green plants, right, green plants, uh, cyanobacteria, and pretty much any type of plant like protists. Now, these are the only types of organisms that actually follow photosynthesis. So these organisms are what we call autotrophs. Auto meaning self, trophs meaning feeders. So they are other feeders, sorry, self feeders. Um, all organisms, Right, or organisms that lie in the, these, these categories of the green plants, cyanobacteria and plant-like protists, are considered autotrophs. All other organisms, all other organisms, such as ourselves, and are referred to as heterotrophs. Right? And hetero meaning other feeders. So we feed off others. So autotrophs pretty much undergo photosynthesis. 
synthesis. While heterotrophs undergo only cellular respiration. However, autotrophs also go under, uh, undergo cellular respiration. However, we don't undergo uh, photosynthesis because well, we can feed off things, right? We eat food, but it's ultimately this step here that allows us pretty much to transfer the energy that is available in the glucose into ATP to pretty much give us the energy that we need in our everyday life. However, plants, they're stuck to growing where they're growing, right? They're, um, they're, they're, there's not much movement in terms of a plant, right? So let's, uh, let's draw a plant. So please excuse my plant here. I'm just going to try to keep it just uh, really, really simple. So we've got now leaves here. These are the leaves of the plant. Okay. And pretty much underneath here, we're going to have our soil. All right. And what we're going to have pretty much is, well, here's our sun. So we have our sun that is pretty much going to give is pretty much the energy from the light right? uh, is going to pretty much drive this reaction. Now, at the same time, think about um, things that we need to give the, uh, the plant. So underneath here, oops, underneath here are the plant's roots. And pretty much this is where it absorbs its water, right? So plants need water. Plants need light from the sun, right? As well as plants need carbon dioxide. So these are the three things that plants need. And at the same time as this is occurring, glucose, let's use a different color, glucose, C6H12O6 uh, is actually made in the leaf and it releases oxygen as one of the final products of photosynthesis. So this reaction can be written as follows. We've got pretty much light energy from the sun plus water, plus the carbon dioxide that we breathe out to produce the glucose that it needs, plus the oxygen. However, this isn't really enough. And actually, let's, uh, let's balance this. Anyone knows in chemistry, if we're, we write a chemical equation, we do want to balance this chemical equation. So this is pretty much the chemical reaction for photosynthesis. Now, the only thing is, is this isn't enough, right? This is pretty much uh, a plant's ability to, let's say, go shopping, right? It's, it's creating all this, uh, this glucose and it's occurring during pretty much the daylight. And of course, ultimately the, the, um, uh, the plant is going to somehow need to break this down. And that's where we talk about uh, with cellular respiration. And where does this pretty much reaction actually take place? Well, it actually takes place in the green pigment called chlorophyll. We've talked about uh, plant cells, right? And one particular uh, organelle that plant cells uh, have are called chloroplasts. Now, for photosynthesis, as we've said, it occurs in uh, the green plants, cyanobacteria, and plant-like protists. Now, in terms of plants, it's really the leaves um, that are particularly specialized for the process of uh, photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplasts 
of green plants. And so we're gonna draw a chloroplast here. And the chloroplast has a double membrane, an outer and an inner membrane. Now inside, we have um, these thylakoid, right, these individual thylakoids that are connected to an other thylakoids right by this little strip here called the oops erase that called the lamella so we've got our outer membrane we've got our inner membrane we've got these individual stacks uh, which are called thylakoid Within here, pretty much, we've got um, this. It's similar to um, to that of uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the um, cytoplasm. However, it's not called a cytoplasm. It's an actual protein-rich fluid called, and it's in here. It's pretty much it fills the whole thing, and it's called the stroma. And as we said, pretty much, um, these are what we call protein rich fluids that are um, within there. And now embedded pretty much within the thylakoid, right? within the thylakoid here. And actually one more thing to, uh, to actually make note is these stacks of thylakoid are called granum so each one is called the granum a whole bunch of them called grana now there are these molecules as we said it's going back to these little dots these dark green dots right so these dark green dots these are molecules of um of light absorbing pigment that are called chlorophyll right so these dots here are called chlorophyll and we talked about it before as being um, the as being the molecule that actually absorbs the light energy, right? So the chlorophyll absorbs the light energy and begins the process of photosynthesis. There are pretty much um, two steps in which um, photosynthesis occurs. One of them being pretty much the light reaction of photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis begins when the chlorophyll molecule in the thylakoid membrane traps that light transfers the energy to an ATP molecule. So we're gonna draw our one um, thylakoid. And within the thylakoid, pretty much, so here's one thylakoid. And within the thylakoid, we've got these embedded molecules um, of chlorophyll. So this whole thing here, pretty much, is a thylakoid. And pretty much here we've got the chlorophyll. And sorry for my messy, messy writing. Now what happens is light, right? So light pretty much is going to make its way towards the chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll, right, ultimately is going to pretty much... Um, trap the light and transfer the energy from the light into ATP. And then ultimately, right, and how did it do it? Well, there were molecules of ADP around. So what it did is it pretty much um, brought that phosphate group back in, right, by transferring the energy from the light into the ADP and ultimately recreating this ATP. And pretty much this ATP ultimately, right, will undergo now a second, um, a second step where it's actually going to pretty much transfer that ATP and restructure that energy, right, into 
pretty much molecules of glucose, right? So it's going to transfer that energy into molecules of glucose. And now how does it transfer it into molecules of glucose? But re remember one of the, the um, initial reactants that photosynthesis or plants require? Plants need CO2. So CO2 comes in, right, to pretty much, um, pretty much transfer that energy, right, to ATP molecules, and then that energy gets transferred into molecules of glucose, right? So, and what is this pretty much step called? Well, this step here is pretty much known as what we call the Calvin cycle. And this is step number two to photosynthesis or a simpler version of photosynthesis, right? So the chemical reaction that produces the carbohydrates, right, this, this glucose is pretty much from the CO2 that the plant actually needs during photosynthesis. So now that energy from the ATP molecule that was produced during this light reaction Right, is what's required for this Calvin cycle to actually occur. And now this energy is then transferred into molecules of glucose, which in turn now is ready to undergo the next step, which is cellular respiration.